mobile phones, um, mobile devices, um, well, I mean, we've got so many devices these days, but let's start with mobile phones anyways, I mean, you know, this extends into the Internet of Things, this extends into embedded computers, um, but, and start, let's start with mobile phones, um, there are, uh, a whole whack of uh, capabilities and, and vulnerabilities because of the capabilities built into mobile devices. Um, just yesterday, giving a um, very basic security seminar to some people from the general public and, and one of the attendees um oh you know she doesn't uh have any problems with that she's just got a flip phone well the thing is the basic circuitry in there you know it, she says you know it's not a smartphone it's it's a flip phone it is a smartphone it just has a a simplified interface for you but you know, the basic processor is the same. The memory is the same. There's maybe less of it. Uh, the display is more simplistic, but you've got a computer. Um, and she goes on to say, you know, it, it can't connect to the Internet. How do you know? Maybe it's connected to the Internet right now. Um, you know, there's so many things have capabilities beyond the basics. And so, you know, those of us who work with IT, yes, we understand this. Um, but we've got all kinds of employees, all kinds of customers, clients, contractors, suppliers, um, who don't understand these things. And uh, so we have to you know, be careful about this. And, and I mean, honest to goodness, um, uh, Gloria, <laughs> uh, interestingly, as we upgraded our, our computers, uh, you know, when, when I get a new laptop, um, when we upgraded our phones, uh, her standard question was, okay, how many of your first computer is this meaning you know how much how many times the memory of your first computer does this phone have built into it um uh, the one that i'm recording this on right now has like you know a thousand times the storage capacity um the the processor i'm not quite sure how many times as powerful as the processor on my first computer it is that's you know but that would be her um her question she was vastly amused by the fact that you know this thing that you can stick in your pocket uh is you know that much more powerful than the first computer that i had at home uh to do all of this you know, email and book writing and, and so on and so forth on. Um, so we have these capabilities in these devices and we have a lack of policies and a definite lack of awareness in regard to these incredibly powerful devices. Um, I mean, I just got a new phone. It's got enough memory in there for me to walk into pretty much any corporation. And with the memory capacity in that phone, you know, if I can tap in to their systems, I would be able to take their entire customer database and all of their highly secure trade secrets and all of their, you know, company confidential proprietary intellectual property and and still have room left over in that phone uh, you know we we don't realize 
how much capacity these devices have that we are carrying around in our pockets. Sometimes multiples. I was out on community policing shift the other night and I had four cell phones in my pockets. Uh, you know, how much capability is that in comparison to, you know, just a, a couple of decades ago? Um, anyway, uh, so we, you know, we aren't paying attention to how capable these devices are. And, and we haven't been keeping up with what are the necessary policies with regard to these devices. And then what if one of them gets stolen? As I say, how much information can you store on the, these devices? In so many ways, the contacts list on your phone, you know, it's probably got all your customers if you're one of the major salespeople for the, the company. Um, you've probably got all kinds of uh, PDFs and files on your phone. And, you know, particularly as, you know, we're trading files via email. And we're doing the email on our phones. So all of those files are there on your phone. Uh, we have, uh, you know, pictures of the company picnic, pictures of meetings with customers, uh, videos of presentations of, you know, top secret company marketing strategies, all of these things on the phones. What happens if somebody steals it? Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, the reason that I don't do any uh, banking on my phone. Uh, my, my bank is uh, always annoyed with me. They're always saying, why don't you have our app on your phone? Because of SIM swapping. Uh, you know, SIM swapping is a... Uh, yeah, I, I do online banking on the computer. But the thing is, with uh, SIM swapping... Um, Somebody can phone up my uh, provider and say, hey, I bought a new phone. I'm Rob. I bought a new phone. Uh, I need to back up my new phone to my, you know, and unfortunately, I, you know, uh, in, in getting the new phone, I, I dropped my old one in the toilet. That's why I got a new phone. I don't have the SIM chip. So here's the SIM chip that I bought. Uh, you know, let's, let's do this. And, and the helpful mobile phone company... We'll say, oh, sure, you know, read me the, the SIM chip number. Okay, you know, now that's associated with your phone. And if I've backed up my phone, which, you know, Apple and, and Google are constantly reminding you that you should do, everything that's there, all your passwords, all your apps that have, you know, your, your McDonald's app that has... A credit card number on it so that you can order so that your order is ready when you walk into the McDonald's or ANW or Subway or whoever and all of these things are there on your phone and and when somebody does the SIM swap they get all of that including if you've got online banking all your banking information you know so they don't even have to actually steal the phone to steal all that information. And, and again, you know, it may be all of the videos and pictures and files and PDFs and contacts that's on your phone. That's all really, really important and confidential to the company. You know, do we have any policies about that? No. Um, 